Hi everyone. First, let's address the elephant in the room. As some of you may know, I do cut my own hair. Yes, I was a little too aggressive. And yes, I have made myself look like Prince Valiant from the Sunday cartoons. Prayers for swift growth. In better news, actually in absolutely incredible news, composting of the dead body, aka natural organic reduction, is now legal in the state of New York. I got to be very involved with this particular legal campaign, which means I was very emotionally involved. And it was stressful because it was by no means a slam dunk. Slam dunk! Yeah, it was less a slam dunk and more like the fan taking a half court shot to win a car. You know when they just like run and heave it? Seven point lead. But it was possible because we had so much support from you. And in four months, we really got California and New York legalized. I don't know if I felt so proud and engaged about something in a long time, especially since the pandemic was so isolating. To be on this team with Katrina Spade and assembly members and all of you is great. But when something is legalized that seems new, environmental, and happening on the coasts, it's going to pique the interest of all media. So what I want to do today is listen to some well-known figures on the right, specifically Sean Hannity and Glenn Beck, respond to the New York composting law. Now, do my personal political beliefs line up with these two men? I would guess likely not much at all. Less a Venn diagram as just like two circles. But so far, freedom to make our own decisions around our deaths and what happens to our dead bodies has been a very bipartisan issue. And I am invested in keeping it that way. I have no delusions of like, I alone can bridge the gap between left and right, Democrat and Republican. I'm a maverick. That's how I feel about it. Magazine. Yes! But I do want to give you the tools and history of the strange but effective alliance here to have this conversation in a rational way with those who maybe don't understand the composting process or the stakes of this legalization. First, we'll tackle Sean Hannity. Welcome to Hannity. All right, we have a ton of breaking news. This was the much shorter of the two. The woman here is someone named Linda, who I believe is a producer on his show. Well, this is the same New York state as we have been saying on a daily basis, has a new law that went out into effect this week, uh, which is that you can you can put in your compost pile grandma, your mom, your dad, any dead body. You can use it for compost. If you're having a conversation with anyone about the composting process or other new technology like water cremation, it's important to first determine, do they have the right information on what the process actually is? Because listening to this, it sounds like Sean Hannity has been told or believes that you yourself put the dead body of your grandmother into your own compost pile in your backyard that the new law allows you to just go out back and <laughs> take matters in your own hands. Now they do have a little process with it and you have to follow it after 30 days. You know, you, you put it in one pile and then in 30 days you move it to the other pile. For some of us deep on the self-reliance spectrum, hi, hello, we wish that was the law. But in fact, the process takes place at a licensed, regulated facility that are inspected and monitored by the state's cemetery and funeral boards. And if you think these regulatory boards are just teeming with masses of Democrats, they're often not. So imagine your mom and dad drop dead, or God forbid, grandma and grandpa drop dead. Uh, you're gonna put them in your compost pile, and even their bones will be put in there, and then you'll use it next summer, what, to grow uh, your crops, if you have a small garden, or grow your flowers, uh, we'll just use mom and dad's ashes to get there. One of the biggest reasons people are so moved by the idea of becoming soil after death is precisely that you won't be ashes. Ashes from a cremation are rendered inorganic by the very high heat of the cremation process. So they aren't the best choice for helping to grow a tree. Whereas becoming soil itself the very thing a new tree requires, that's what composting offers. So you don't want mom or dad's ashes, as Hannity is saying, you want mom or dad's soil. I'll tell you right now, and I'm gonna say this and you're gonna be surprised. If somebody writes in their will that they wanna be um, 
cremated or they want to be composted or they want to be put in a big box or set out seat, whatever it is, that's fine. That's your business. But if I was to buy a house and you buried your grandma in the backyard and you got beautiful tomatoes, I'm telling you right now, that should be in the disclosure form when you buy that house. I want to know, I want a line item that says, by the way, I used <laughs> dead bodies to make that garden. You're not going to like this, Linda. Real estate disclosures vary wildly from state to state. In some places, you don't even have to disclose a whole dead body buried in the yard. But that's a whole other video. They're burying them in their backyard. No! All right, drum roll please, Glenn Beck. Come on down, you're the next contestant on The Price is Right. This is Glenn and a man named Stu, who I believe is also a producer. Yesterday, she signed legislation permitting the process, it's environmental friendly, of composting dead people. Mm, wonderful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is the uh, known as the Mafia Act. When he says mafia, I'm assuming he is confusing this process with how water cremation is often confused with acid. It's like a big Dick Ham style misunderstanding. Dick Ham! I do need to make this clear. Anyone, anyone looking to dispose of bodies for nefarious reasons would not select the slow, gentle breakdown of the body through composting. Especially since the body takes several weeks to go through the process, giving anyone investigating the missing person ample time to be like, well, who's in here? Of all the methods of disposing of the dead body, it makes least rational sense in the mafia context, in the sinister mass disposal context. It's just not the one. It's not the droid you're looking for. Move along. Rather than hmm. cremating or embalming a deceased person and placing him or her in a casket, uh, this is natural organic reduction and involves placing the deceased in a reusable receptacle filled with organic materials such as wood chips, alfalfa, straw, uh, and then uh, heating it up and putting oxygen in there. I do appreciate that, unlike Hannity, he's reading the actual description of the process, which does not include putting grandma in your own compost pile. They always use grandma. Poor grandma. Haven't I been through enough? And then allowing, you know, maggots and things to um, you know, help with the deco mm. you know, the decomposing of the body. What a wonderful way to go. Oh, nope, wait, you didn't you didn't read that in the description. There are no maggots in composting because it's a closed container. You would need flies to have access to the body to lay the eggs that would hatch into maggots. They don't just spontaneously generate. Although, you may not appreciate this, Glenn, but I like maggots. They're perfect machines. Maggots have been involved with decomposing the dead body for time immemorial. Mwah! God bless them. Nature's little miracles. Uh, they're saying a single human body can yield as much as a cubic yard <gasps> of nutrient-dense soil. That's fantastic. Yeah. What, yeah. A, what a blessing. And, and cremation uses fossil fuels. Um, mm. A burial, a burial uses a lot of land and has a carbon footprint. No. This is interesting because they're saying this in a sarcastic voice, but at the same time, just reading the facts about the process. And while I don't appreciate that tone of voice, at least the facts do allow his audience to decide whether or not this sounds good to them. This one, we just grind the teeth and the bones up and we just put it in the flower bed. And, I then, can't and then you can grow vegetables, and then you can make Soylent Green. Soylent Green is people! Well, that escalated quickly. See, and that's, that's your way of living on, Glenn. Your, your body will be soil that will help a tree grow, and that's your legacy. This is exactly what people have responded so forcefully to, and is so meaningful to so many. I guess you're mocking it, but I think you're also selling it. There's some things I don't want to think about. Like, I don't want to think about waste disposal, a human waste disposal. I don't want to think about the process that goes on. That makes, I'm glad wanna, it exists. I'm glad I it just, exists. I'm I, never applying. I support it. Right. I support it. Right. And glad I, there are people that do it. And I would give them, after a shower and a change of clothes, I would give them <laughs> medals or whatever. Right. They're saying sanitation workers and death workers are dirty and they don't want to think about death. I appreciate that honesty on one hand. But on the other, I suspect they would not characterize themselves as wealthy, out-of-touch elite. I've got a job in Ripon. I said I'll start tomorrow. A job? They would probably think of themselves as of the people, not afraid to get dirty. But ignoring the realities of death and mortality, 
in an attempt to keep your life pristine and clean? That is the reality only for the wealthy out of touch elite. What, what is a weekend? So it ends up showing their cards a little. I don't want to think about the whole process. Right. I don't want to think about what happens before, through, after, I don't want to think about shaking your hand. <laughs> you know, when in a week I'm at McDonald's. What? This kind of goes on for a while. There's going to come a time when Glenn Beck shakes my hand. He will be disgusted. A week later, Glenn Beck will be at a McDonald's. He will remember how he shook my hand. Glenn Beck will shudder. I don't want to think I about it. I don't want to think about that, right. but I'm glad that exists. You exist. And like, look, I understand, you know, the, the human body after you die. There's lots of things that happen, and I don't want to think about them necessarily. Part of the reason I have dedicated so much of my life to this advocacy is not the environmental aspect, although that plays a role, but it's for humans to realize that building this wall. We're going to build a wall. Not that kind of wall. Building this barrier, this elaborate barrier between themselves and the reality of their own deaths. This kind of swaddling, coddling away from the truth of their own mortality, which has only been possible in the last hundred years or so, is damaging to us. Because when you're living away from the truth of your ultimate death, especially when you have this privilege to go, ew, gross, I don't want to think about that. Don't we hire the dirty ones to do the task? You're living a lie. And the damage you do to the earth and to each other, it comes from that lie. Maybe a heavy response to Glenn Beck not wanting to think about me in a McDonald's, but it's true. You know, you're some green protester who's been gluing yourself to things to protest the climate for your entire life. Maybe this seems really enticing. Yes, love to glue myself to things. I'll do it right now. And you know, you want to do that to yourself. As you point out, it seems demeaning to me in some way, but like, it's, I guess it's your choice. I guess it's your choice. And this is crucial. This is where their libertarianness starts to show, and I like it. This version where they don't get it, but they support my right to do it, that is much better than the version of, ew, is it soylent green? That's silly and immature. This other version is better, and where we would hopefully be able to get everyone. I mean, I'm with yeah. people who are like, just put me in a, you know, put me in a wood box, even a cardboard box. I, I mean, I, you don't need to spend $5,000. Why do I need a pillow? I'm really not. It's not like I'm tossing and turning in there. Going, it, Jeez, I can't fluff this pillow up. Uh, I mean, even if I have the pillow, I can't get my arms up to the pillow to refluff it once it goes flat. So stop. Oh, Glenn Beck, you are teeter tottering on the edge of base tier. Take all those feelings you have. The feelings that funerals make cost too much. The corporate funeral may be selling you too many products that you might want to opt out and choose something simpler that aligns more with your values. All of those feelings might lead you to make the choice to be composted. It's right there. You're so close. Like, I guess you should be able to make your own choice. I am. I do think it's odd to make this like a big public pronouncement, though. A big public pronouncement? It was illegal. Currently, most people are not allowed to make their own decisions for our dead bodies outside narrow options of burial or cremation. Trust me, you think it's fun going state by state legalizing this? I think though, if you, if this was something central to you and you cared about it, you should be able to do whatever you want with your dead body, other than like, I don't know, leave it on my porch. I'm not saying- Yes, see, that's the thing. That is the corpse libertarian energy we're talking about. You should be able to make the decision that is right for you and your dead body. They keep almost saying this. They get there or they almost get there and then they pull back and they go, well, anything, I mean, except composting, because for me personally, that one's, I don't like it. If you're on the political right, you don't need to be outraged by this. You can let the little libertarian angel on your shoulder say, well, let this one go. Decisions around the dead body don't really hurt you or me. Just let them do it. There needs to be a respect for the human body. But like, you could argue that, you know, again, I don't, this is not my argument, but you could argue cremation is a, is weird too, right? What do you mean you're gonna you're gonna turn my body into ash and then no, keep it on your on your on your vanity board? Sure. Like, like ah, there it is again. Mm, come on, boys. You were almost getting it. It is kind of a different, like, I, no, but so was, is burying. I, no, like, my every dad part was of cremated. this is weird. I know. My dad was. Yeah. Yeah. Every part of this is weird. Or let me just try this one on for size. Maybe none of this is weird. 
Maybe those of us who still accept death as a part of the cycle of life, accept its rational place, are the normal ones. Bruh. If there's a dead animal, a dead horse, you would bury the horse. Okay, you'd bury but, the horse. And the reason you for that is compo You wouldn't like, you know what? Hey, mama, come on, bring out those potato uh, <laughs> peelings. We're going to put them on the horse. Oh, he's going to be great for the garden. The process of composting the dead body came from livestock mortality composting, which they've been doing for decades. So that's exactly what farmers do. We are farmers, but ba, 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 composting cows. I think if you're weird enough to want to compost yourself, I think that's a, you should be able to do it. I, it's a weird, maybe it's a libertarian in me coming out and just saying, look, you want to compost yourself, go ahead. That's good. That's the libertarian in you. But real libertarians, they don't just say it's okay for us to do it. They help us fight for the right to make that decision. That's why us environmental death weirdos and home funeral people and low cost funeral advocates are buddy buddy with the libertarians on this. Because without the libertarians' help, Big Funeral has all the power, and no one but Big Funeral wants that. Ba, ba, ba. We'll get you. Unless you do, Steve. Oh, I love corporate funeral monopolies. They're my favorite. I wouldn't be so against it if I just didn't think we were cheapening human life yeah. everywhere. On a serious note, though, I will say that no matter who you are, it's always the right move to avoid calling someone else's deeply held death beliefs demeaning or cheap. If I went to Glenn Beck's wife's funeral or his mother's funeral and called their ceremony and decisions for her body demeaning and gross and disgusting, he'd probably be horrified and confused. And rightly so, because you shouldn't do that to other people. My personal belief is that the future of death is a little left and a little right a sprinkle of better financial support and help from the government in a more traditionally left way, and a sprinkle of increased freedom of decision, more self-sufficiency, and less regulation in a more traditionally libertarian or right-leaning way. It makes for strange bedfellows, but working together has done a lot of good and helped people die better. That's all. Gentlemen, have me on your shows. I'm happy to talk you through this. This is where I usually say, if you like the work of these videos, you can donate to Patreon. And yes, still do that. But today I want to specifically shout out our nonprofit, The Order of the Good Death. This is where myself and others are working to legalize composting and water cremation in all 50 states, and hopefully around the world. Your membership and donations to the order allows us the mandate to keep focusing on these efforts. You may also want to follow our Instagram, where we keep you up to date on the latest campaigns, including some new ones in large states, southern states, states where the fight won't be easy. But we're ready. Now pay attention, you hear? Now I'll tell you a story and I'll make it swift With some rightward fellas they got pretty myth About the compost law just signed in New York State And the new law said that when you're dead You can lay yourself to rest in a compost bed And that, my friends, may be the future of death Well, the rightward men, they didn't like it one bit And they trashed the laws they saw fit But you know, that's their choice and I guess it's just what they see All right but there may come a time, there may come a day When the things they see will make them say to this compost law Now that's the future of death Here we go But right now All that they think is you'll cut up your grandma Right there in your sick and they dump her in the soil, make a garden of her spleen And turn the rest into soil and green But that, my friends, just ain't the future of death Show them how it's done, Grandma Woo! Alright Keep going, Grandma Ooh, that's so nice Now these rightward guys, they also say That the folks will bury us should hide away And leave them in peace while they snack on their Big Macs but that's a fact of life, so quit your gripes You had your say, hope you have a nice day But quit getting in the way of the future of death 
But they're stuck And they still think that you'll cut up your grandma Right there at your sink And they dump her in the soil, make a garden over spleen And turn the rest into soil and green Before the last time, just leave poor grandma alone it's open me to claim it's obscene Quit jumping on my death rats, you know what I mean And just accept that this is the future of jail So take your outrage and shove it in a can And how about instead, come here and shake my hand Let's work together and set this record straight we can raise our voice so we have more choice To do as we please after we're deceased And show a little respect for the future of death So there you have it folks, the fight goes on And when it gets real tough we'll just soldier on As we blaze our path state by state by state Yeah we'll turn some heads, advocate for new laws Ignore the jeers, we don't need no applause What we do my friends is for a better future of death Woo!